The following program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Majestic Ministries International. Welcome to Majestic. We are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. And here's your host and teacher, Prophetess Lafisia Lewis of Majestic Ministries International. Hello and welcome to Majestic. I am Prophetess Lethesia Lewis of Majestic Ministries International and I truly count it an honor and a privilege to share with you the living word of God. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, we magnify you, we glorify you, we bless your holy name. Thank you so very much, Lord, for the awesome honor opportunity and privilege to teach your word to these, your people. I thank you for all of the testimonies that have come forth, lives that are being given to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as receiving him as their personal Lord and Savior, bodies being healed. We thank you, Lord, for lives being restored only because of what you can do, Heavenly Father. So be glorified through this broadcast in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I just ask for your anointing to go through the airwaves right now to remove burdens, to destroy yokes of bondage as we bind the works of darkness in the name of Jesus and for your glory to fill the earth, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise and glory, Lord Jesus, for the victory for now and forevermore. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and ask all of these things. Amen. Again, welcome to Majestic. I am Prophetess Lethesia Lewis, and thank you so very much for tuning in as I continue the teaching on spiritual warfare. But as I always say, I want you to partner with the ministry. I want you to pray and ask the Heavenly Father what he will have you to sow in order for this kingdom teaching to remain on the air. Of course, we pray to the Heavenly Father, but you sowing your gifts of love, you are being an answer to prayer. So there are many ways that you can give. You can text to give. There's a telephone number on the screen right now where you can text your love gift. You can also mail your check or money order to the ministry. The PO box is right there on the screen. Or you can give electronically. You can give through Cash App, PayPal, or Venmo. And if you give through one of those electronic means, please include your email address. And so again, we praise the Lord for all of those who have been partnering with the ministry, who are sowing your gifts of love and the ministry. We are in agreement with you for your financial harvest in the name of Jesus. So let's get into the word. As I always say, I love, love, love teaching on spiritual warfare. Do not allow the word spiritual warfare to cause you to be fearful or alarmed. No, that is an indication of the power of God here in the earth, giving us the victory over the works of darkness. And so right now I am teaching on our nine spiritual weapons. So let's turn to our foundational scripture. I am reading from the King James Version of the Bible. So I want you to get your Bible and follow along with me in scripture. I don't want you to just read the scriptures that are on the screen. I want you to follow along with me in your Bible. Okay. So second Corinthians chapter 10, starting with verse three, and it reads for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Verse four, for the weapons, plural, of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly, but they are mighty through God. Our spiritual weapons are mighty through God. That is what I want you to understand, child of God. Our spiritual weapons that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has given unto us, they are mighty, but they are only mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. There are strongholds that have to be pulled down from people's lives. Verse five, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So that means that we have to be doers of the word and not hearers only. I am teaching you the word of God on spiritual warfare, but it is for you to do the word according to that which you are being taught. Okay. So I am now teaching on prayer and there are different types of prayer. There's uh, praying in tongues, the prayer of agreement, 
the prayer of binding and loosing, the prayer of faith, the prayer of thanksgiving, prayer of intercession, and the prayer of dedication and consecration. Well, I finally finished teaching on the importance of praying in your heavenly prayer language, being filled with the Holy Spirit. I did not want to rush the Holy Spirit because there were so many people who were calling the television ministry, who were calling the prayer line, requesting prayer to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And many people who called in, they did pray in tongues. They did pray in their heavenly prayer language to God be the glory. That is so awesome. And so we need to pray. We need to have a consistent prayer life, child of God. And so now I am teaching on the different aspects of prayer. However, before I get to that, let's also look at first Peter chapter five, first Peter chapter five and verse eight. And this is what the Holy Spirit gave to the apostle Peter. Be sober, be vigilant. That means we need to be sober. We need to be alert. We need to be watchful, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, my adversary, all of us, we have the same adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. And as I always say, if the devil is walking around seeking to devour, then that means that he cannot devour everyone. And that's why prayer is so important. Prayer is so powerful because prayer is your hedge of protection around you and your family, around you and your business, around you and your ministry in the name of Jesus. And this is how it reads in the Amplified version. It reads, be sober, well-balanced and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. We have power and authority over the works of darkness in the name of Jesus. I want to say that again. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has given us power and authority over the works of darkness. But let's turn back again to 2 Corinthians. Let's turn back because I need to emphasize something as the Lord is instructing me to share this with you right now. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. For the weapons, plural, the weapons, the weapons, the weapons. Say, I have weapons. Say it again. I have spiritual weapons for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You have been given a responsibility to pull down strongholds. Verse five, you have the responsibility of casting down imaginations. You have the responsibility to cast it down in the name of Jesus. Every thought that comes to your mind, you do not have to accept the child of God. Every thought is not of the Lord. And for you to know the difference between your thoughts, the Lord's thoughts and the lies of the devil, you have to spend time in the word of God because Satan comes with deception. Nothing to fear, nothing to be afraid of. Don't you know that the Lord God Almighty is far greater, far more powerful than the works of darkness? Don't you know that there are angels that are more powerful than Satan himself? Don't you know that there are more angels than there are demons? Put your angels on assignment. That's your responsibility. So going back to verse five again, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You rebuke the lies of the devil in the name of Jesus. You cast down his lies in Jesus name. And it goes on to say, and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. I remember a few years ago, I went on a women's retreat and the lady who was teaching, uh, moderating and teaching the retreat. I remember she challenged us to go on a seven day fast from negative thoughts, negative thinking. Wow. This was many years ago. You know, that was actually life changing for me. Someone might say, well, prophetess, how can that be life changing for you? Because if we're not being cognizant of our thoughts and just kind of going through life and not paying attention to our thoughts, then our minds and our souls can become garbled, if you will, can become jumbled. 
I want to challenge all of you who are watching right now. Go on a seven day fast from negative thoughts and negative thinking and do as the word of God says. The word of God teaches us to think on these things. There are specific things that we are to think about and think about the goodness of the Lord. Think about the purposes and the plans that the Lord has for your life. So I'm going to give you the scripture. I'll, I want you to write this down and look this up. Okay. I want you to look up Philippians chapter four, verse eight. I want you to look that up. I want you to read that scripture because that is what I want you to do on a daily basis is to think on these things. Think on the goodness of the Lord. Think on the victory of the Lord. Me teaching spiritual warfare is not about focusing on devils and demons and negative things. No, me teaching spiritual warfare is for you to know who you are in Christ Jesus and the power, the authority that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has already given to us. Hallelujah. And so cast down the lies of the devil because here's the, here's the reality. Come on, child of God. Let's go there. You know that if the devil lies to you about somebody else, it will have you feeling some kind of way towards that person. Come on, let's talk about it. The devil will send a lie to your thought about someone. And all of a sudden you will start thinking, Hmm, well, Knowing that that's the lie from Satan, you cast that down in Jesus name. And so going back to prayer, like I said, there were so many people who were calling the ministry. And if you are in need of prayer right now, because I'm getting ready to start teaching on the power of the prayer of agreement. If you want one of our anointed prayer partners to pray for you and pray with you to touch and agree with you, call the ministry right now. 989 Majestic. That's area code 989-625-3784. And we will set ourselves in agreement with you. Hallelujah. But again, on the last broadcast, I wrapped up the importance of being filled with the Holy Spirit. All Christians need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Lord has given us, as I have written from my book, Heaven's Arsenal, Hell's Destruction a book on spiritual warfare. I want to encourage you to order a copy of my book. Hallelujah. Because we have glory. Hallelujah. So many powerful aspects that the Lord has given to us for the kingdom of God to be victorious in this earth realm. We have power and authority. So again, the Lord has given to me nine spiritual weapons. I'm not saying that there are only nine, but I am teaching you on the nine that the Lord has given to me. And again, we already covered praise and worship. So if you're just now tuning in, you can always go back um, online and see some of the other broadcasts. But we taught on the importance of praise and worship. I already covered that. I taught you on the importance of that. Now I'm teaching on the importance of prayer as a spiritual weapon against the devil. We do not use prayer as a last resort. We always use prayer as a first priority. When you wake up in the morning, you need to pray. When you go to bed at night, you need to pray all throughout the day. You need to pray. Why? Because we need to be in a place of constant communion with the Lord, talking to the Lord. You know that the Lord says that he no longer calls us servants. He calls us friends. If we do the will of our heavenly father, I want to be a friend of God. When you pray, you could talk to the Lord about anything and everything. Nothing is off limits. There is nothing going on in your life that the Lord cannot handle. He wants you to be transparent. He wants you to come to him and to pray and to seek his face. If you need direction, if you need to uh, make a decision about something, you need to pray and consult with the heavenly father in the name of Jesus. And so with that being said, I am teaching today on the power of the prayer of agreement. Hallelujah. So I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18. And if this ministry is a blessing to you, I would love to read your testimonies. You can email the ministry testimonies at majestic 
That's testimonies at majesticmi.org. You can always call in your testimony, 989-MAJESTIC, or you can mail a letter to the ministry. I love receiving the correspondence from the viewers who write handwritten notes, handwritten letters. That blesses me so much. So to God be the glory. And so Matthew chapter 18 and I am reading from the red letter edition of the Bible. The red letter edition means that these are the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Matthew chapter 18, starting with verse 19, the Lord says, again, I say unto you that if two of you, that this is so powerful, hallelujah. The Lord says, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. Verse 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. This is so powerful. I love the fact that the Lord says all it takes is two. All it takes is two people. If two people would touch and agree, asking the Heavenly Father of anything according to his will, that we will receive those petitions. We will receive those answers to our prayers. Glory be to God. Do you realize how powerful that is? Let me read this again. The Lord says, verily, or I was reading verse 18 and that's uh, binding and loosing. And I will get to that in a future broadcast, but verse 19, excuse me, verse 19, the Lord says, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, this is the power of the prayer of agreement. All it takes is two people. Glory to God. You have to make sure that whoever it is that you are having standing with you and praying with you, that they are truly in faith to receive the promises of God and to receive those answered prayers. So do not have people come in agreement with you if they are not truly in agreement. I'm going to say that again. Do not have people come in agreement with you for your prayers to be answered if they are not truly in agreement. And I will give you examples of that shortly. The Lord says, again, I say unto you, this is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord said it. He said, I say unto you that if two of you will agree on earth as touching anything that they will ask, it will be done for them of my father, which is in heaven for where two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. Hallelujah. Two or three of us gathered together in the name of Jesus. The Lord is with us. He is in the midst of us. That is so powerful. That means that basically, since we are the church, and I don't mean basically taking anything away from the things of God, because there's nothing basic about the things of God. The kingdom of God is powerful. But what I'm saying is basically to emphasize is that two or three people, no matter where you are, Christians, we can have church anywhere. You don't have to wait until you get to the house of God. You could touch and agree with someone over the phone. Glory. Hallelujah. You can send an email to someone say, touch and agree with me regarding this situation. You can send a text message. Hallelujah. Wherever two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus, he is in our midst. And because of social um, technology, because of the advances of technology and social media, you have people, Christians all around the world who are praying all around the world who are touching and agreeing. That is so powerful because the Lord says that wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst. So it doesn't matter if you are in one state and someone is in another state. If you're in one country, someone is in another country. The Lord is with us. He is in the midst. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And this is how it reads in the Amplified Version. The Amplified Bible reads, again, I say to you that if two believers on earth agree, that is, are of one mind in harmony about anything that they ask within the will of God, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, meeting together as my followers, I am there among them. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is how 
It reads Matthew 18, 19 and 20 in the Living Bible, the Living Bible translation. And it reads, I also tell you this, if two of you agree down here on earth concerning anything you ask for, my father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together because they are mine, I will be right there among them. I will be right there among them. I will be right there among them. I am praying and believing God that as you are watching these broadcasts, that your faith is arising. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema word of God. So child of God, let faith arise, knowing that the Lord promised us he would never leave us. He would never forsake us. He would never abandon us. Hallelujah. And so because I am teaching spiritual warfare from the military perspective, from military parallels, the power of the prayer of agreement is so necessary. Why? Because the Lord sent them out two by two. The Lord never intended any of us to be islands unto ourselves. Now, I'm not saying that we start allowing ourselves to become totally dependent upon people for prayers to be answered. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is even in the military, they have coverage. You always have someone on the lookout. You might have someone going into a building, someone going on the rooftop. You might have a sniper somewhere paying attention to what's going on. That's how it is for us as Christians that one of us might be dealing with a situation, but you have someone who will come in agreement with you in the name of Jesus covering you in prayer. So basically the power of the prayer of agreement is covering you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So allow faith to arise. You have to get a picture in your mind, child of God. As the word of God teaches us, greater is he who is in us than he, the devil who is in the world. You have power and authority as I am teaching you. So make sure you continue to tune in every week so you can get equipped. So you would know who you are in Christ Jesus. So you would know that we are seated and high in heavenly places with the Lord. So you would know that the devil is under our feet. So you would know the power of prayer, the power in the prayer of agreement, the power of praying in tongues, the power of the prayer of dedication and consecration of the other forms of prayer so that you would know that you are powerful for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Christianity is not pitiful. Christianity is powerful. And I can't believe how quickly time is moving. So I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to Amos. That's the Old Testament. Amos chapter 3. And I am going to read verse 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. And I remember as a little girl eating the famous Amos cookies. <laughs> Those were some delicious chocolate chip cookies, famous Amos, because uh, there were times in which a lot of people would name their children after people from the Bible. And so I don't know if that's the case uh, of Mr. Amos, who founded famous Amos cookies, but Amos is in the Bible. And so Amos chapter three, verse three. And it reads, can two walk together except they be agreed? Once again, can two walk together except they be agreed? You have to make sure that when you begin to pray and ask people to come in agreement with you, you have to make sure that they are truly walking in agreement and harmony with you. If you begin to share something with someone about what it is that you're believing God for, and they begin to speak words of doubt and unbelief, or, well, I don't know about that. Well, hmm, everybody's not able and making little snide remarks and comments like that. Then, you know, that is not the person you need to go to, to come in agreement with you for the prayer of what it is that you are believing God for. The power of the prayer of agreement is spiritual reinforcement. 
The word of God teaches us that one can chase in a thousand. One can chase a thousand demons. You have power and authority only because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to command a thousand demons to flight. But as I always say, if someone is dealing with a thousand and five demons, then that means that there are five left over. One could chase a thousand to 10,000. So that's why the power and the prayer of agreement, when you touch and agree and believe according to the word of God, that is spiritual reinforcement, spiritual covering glory to God. So this is what the Lord shared with me. And I want to share with you because he had me post this on social media. He said, tell my people, stop trying to explain spiritual things to a carnal mind. I'm going to say that again. Stop trying to explain spiritual things to a carnal mind. So in other words, you might have friends or family members or even coworkers, colleagues, neighbors, they might go to church, but just because they go to church does not mean that they are spiritually in tune with the Lord and the things of God like you are. So if you're going to someone, and just because you've been knowing this person for many years, for a long time, and you might feel like that person is safe for them to come in agreement with you. Remember, child of God, let me share this with you. When it comes to the things of God is nothing personal, it's spiritual. I'm going to say that again. When it comes to the things of God is nothing personal. It is spiritual, meaning that as we already see here in scripture, Amos chapter three, verse three, can two walk together except they be agreed. I want to challenge you right now. Start paying attention to who you have in your life because you might be embracing someone thinking they're more spiritual than what they really are. You might be embracing someone thinking that they can come in agreement with you for what you're believing God for and their faith level might not be there. You love people, but make sure whoever you have praying in agreement with you that you're on the same level or that person is on a higher spiritual level than you are. Do you understand what I'm saying? You do not need your prayers to be hindered because of someone else's doubts and unbelief. No, you do not. Well, I am Prophetess Lethesia Lewis. I want you to stay tuned because I am going to continue teaching on the power of the prayer of agreement. Because again, it is our spiritual covering. It is spiritual covering of making sure that when you have someone in agreement with you, they are truly in agreement with you. Reinforcement. I love you. See you next week. Thank you for watching Majestic, the spiritual warfare teaching by Prophetess Leticia Lewis of Majestic Ministries International. For more information, please visit MajesticMI.org. That's MajesticMI.org. Carefully consider sowing a seed or becoming a monthly partner with the ministry to keep this kingdom teaching on air. And remember, we are more than conquerors through the Lord who loves us. This journey, the Lord has given me, cause I can do all things through Christ, cause he has strengthened me.